Let's for convergence and divergence of the following series. Here you have the summation of one times three times five, dot, 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 two n minus one divided by two times five times eight, dot, 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 3n minus 1 and start from 1 and goes to infinity. Okay, perfect. Which test help us to analyze the behavior of this series? Let us use the ratio test. The ratio test says if you find the limit of the absolute value of a n plus 1 divided by a n as n goes to infinity and this guy is equal to l, you have three scenarios, three cases. If l is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent and then you're going to say that it is convergent indeed. If l is more than 1, then the series is divergent. And if L is equal to one, then the series is inconclusive. Doesn't work. It means that we have to switch to a different test. So let us apply the ratio test and see what do we get. This guy is equal to the limit of the absolute value of a n plus 1 divided by a n as n goes to infinity, which is equal to the limit of wherever you see n, you're going to use n plus 1 instead. So you have the limit of a n plus 1. Let me use this guy here for a n plus 1. I'm going to use a different color. So you get 1 times 3 times 5 dot dot dot. 2 times n plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 times 5 times it dot 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 3 times n plus 1 minus 1 and then on the denominator I'm going to use the same blue color. You have 1 times 3 times 5 2 n minus 1 divided by 2 times 5 times 8 3 n minus 1 and then close up the absolute value and take the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, let us simplify this as much as we can. This is the limit of absolute value. So on the numerator, I'm going to end up multiplying these two together. And then on the denominator, I'm ending up multiplying these two together. So let's see what's happening here. Can we simplify this further or not? So I have 1 times 3 times 5 times, if I distribute 2 into parentheses, minus 1, I get 2n plus 2 minus 1, or 2n plus 1. And then from the denominator, I have 2 times 5 times 8 times 3n minus 1. Down here on the denominator, you have 2 times 5 times 8. And if I distribute 3 into parentheses, I get 3n plus 3 minus 1, which is 3n plus 2, multiplied by 1 times 3 times 5 times 2n minus 1. So let us simplify as much as we can, then we find the limit. So let's see what's happening here. All right, can I simplify this further or not? These numbers are all in the form of 2n plus 1. So if I want to write this guy in more expanded form, I get the following. I have the limit of the absolute value of 1 times 3 times 5 times 2n minus 1 times 2n plus 1. This is the term before 
2n plus 1. And then here I have 2 times 5 times 8, 3n minus 1. And down on the denominator, let me put it in a box. This is the same box that you see here. divided by, and here you have 2 times 5 times 8, and one term before it is 3n minus 1. So let's put a box here for you. Dot, 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 3n minus 1 multiplied by 3n plus 2 and the rest of the terms 1 times 3 times 5 dot 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 2n minus 1 and you're taking the limit as n goes to infinity okay can we simplify this further take a look i have 2 times 5 times 8 times 3n minus 1 and 2 times 5 times 3 times a times 3n minus 1 on the numerator and the denominator. I can cancel these two out. Also, what I see here, I have the following. I have 1 times 3 times 5 times 2n minus 1 on the numerator on the denominator. So you basically can simplify this into a nice rational expression. This is the limit of 2n plus 1 divided by 3n plus 2 2n plus 1 divided by 3n plus 2 as n goes to infinity well this is nothing but 2 over 3 right since it is 2 divided by 3 and it is your l and this is less than 1 so by ratio test This series is absolutely convergent, and it is convergent indeed. And convergent. So let us recap what we did. We have the following series, the summation of 1 times 3 times 5 times 2n minus 1. Remember that these are the terms of this uh, multiplication. You have 1 times 3 times 5 times the rest of the terms. Here you have 2n minus 1, and you can find the term before it as 2 times n minus 1 minus 1. The same on the denominator. Here you have 2 times 5 times 8. The term before it is 3 times n minus 1 minus 1 times 3n minus 1. So this is the multiplication of these terms. By substituting n plus 1 or n minus 1, you can find the term before and after. So what are we going to do? We're going to use the ratio test to check the convergence and divergence of this series. For the ratio test, we know that if we find the limit of absolute value of a n plus 1 divided by a n and it's equal to l, we get three scenarios. If l is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent and you're going to say that it is convergent. If l is more than 1, Indeed, you can say that the series is divergent. If L is exactly 1, then the test is inconclusive. It means that it's not working in this case, and we have to switch to something different. We have to apply other tests. So let us begin. On the numerator, we're going to build a n plus 1. It means that wherever you see n, you're going to use n plus 1. On the denominator, you're going to copy down 
your general term a n and then you're going to do a little bit of algebra and after applying algebra we can see that this rational expression can be simplified into 2n plus 1 divided by 3n plus 2 when you take the limit as n goes to infinity you can get rid of absolute value because these terms are all positive this is a positive term so we get rid of the absolute value you end up with the limit of 2n plus 1 divided by 3n plus 2 as n goes to infinity which is two-thirds this is your l and when l is less than 1 it means that using the ratio test the, te the series is absolutely convergent and indeed you can say that it is a convergent series